All right, well, we're going to try another pass at the International Space Station. This time I think I'm set up a little bit better. Instead of using just one radio, I'm going to be using two. One radio will only listen for the space station, and the other radio will only transmit to the space station. They will work independently of each other. And each of the radios is connected to a different antenna. So the uplink that I'll be sending to the International Space Station on VHF will be going through one of my egg beater antennas that is up on the mast in the backyard. And the other smaller egg beater antenna for 70 centimeter reception will be connected to the other radio. Even though I'm wearing a Kenwood hat, I'm actually using Yesu equipment for this attempt today. My Yesu FT-847 will be the radio that I use to receive the International Space Station on. And my smaller Yesu FT-817 over there will be the radio I'm using to transmit. Now the FT-817 only has 5 watts of output power when it's being powered up by an external power source. So what I also have connected to my 817 is a small Mirage linear amplifier, which will take 5 watts in and put 35 watts out into the antenna. One of the things we have to worry about when we're uh, tuning our radios for space communications is the Doppler shift effect. When a space station or a satellite is coming towards you, the frequency that you're hearing it on appears to be higher because the frequency is being boosted a little bit by the forward motion to in your direction of the object. As the object passes overhead and starts to go out over the ocean, in my case, uh, the frequency will appear to be lower uh, on the receive, uh, so I have to account for that. The other thing I have to account for in reverse is my transmit frequency. If the thing is traveling farther away and it's downrange and departing from, from the sky, I have to actually transmit at a higher frequency so when it gets to the device or the satellite or the space station, it'll be at the right frequency. So thankfully, using my computer program called G-Predict, it handles the orbital elements of the space station and it handles all of the Doppler shift issues and it automatically tunes my radios. Now, in this case, I only have one of the two radios hooked up to G-Predict, which is the listening radio, the FT-847. So as you will see, it will automatically tune the frequency of the radio for me. Meanwhile, I'll watch what it's saying for the uplink frequency on the other panel, and I'll manually tune the FT-817 to match the uplink frequency. <clears throat> so the space station is almost about to come into view, and uh, we're going to give it a try. Okay, we pick up the space station in five seconds. We should start hearing it very soon after that. It's already coming in. Kilo India 4, Whiskey Echo, Foxtrot, Victor Yankee 2, Hotel, Foxtrot. Don't think I'm hitting it yet. It's not even 4 degrees above the horizon. But I can hear it. Hi, John. Hi, John. K8YSE, Victor Yankee 2 Hotel, Foxtrot, Fox November 86. I signal BY2HF, K8YSE, uh, EN91. Good to hear you. Great to hear you too, John. Thank you, BY2HF. Got it. BY2HF, WBYSK. W1HMM, BY2HF, Fox November 86. Thank you. Whiskey Bravo 1, Mike Kilo, Victor Yankee 2, Hotel Foxtrot, Fox November 86. Let's see where the satellite is. Whiskey Bravo 1, Fox Juliet, Victor Yankee 2, Hotel Foxtrot, Fox November 86. Whiskey 
WB1FJ DY2HF. Copy. Fox November 42. I'm Fox November 86 in PEI. Let's see where the satellite is. It's over Labrador right now. Hitting a good. Victor Yankee 2 Hotel Foxtrot, listening. Now we're in the phase where I can get into it, but the Americans can't see it because they're too far away. It's getting a little too low in the sky for the Americans now, so uh, the good news is I can have it to myself. The bad news is there's very few people to talk to. It is going to go over Ireland and Scotland or the, the footprint will go over Ireland and Scotland very soon. I'm going to stay on and try that, but I don't have a lot of hope that I'll be able to get through to it. But we shall see. Okay, right now the space station is down below 16 degrees in elevation, so it's falling all the time. Uh, presently, it just went off the northeast coast of Newfoundland, so it's now going out over the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, the next landfall it will make will be over Europe. Uh, notwithstanding that, I can still actually see, or at least my radio can see, the antennas of the International Space Station. But as it gets lower and lower in the sky, uh, it gets farther away, and the angle is such that it's a lot harder to put radio signals into it. So, uh, had great luck there. I worked John, K8YSE, uh, who has a station in Ohio, and I also worked WB1FJ, uh, who's in New England. So, uh, did pretty good on that pass of the International Space Station. Didn't talk to any astronauts in the space station, but I got the next best thing, which is talking to other amateurs in the United States using the International Space Station and the power budget and the solar panels that they're able to devote to uh, powering up our repeater that we have up there. So that's awesome. Well, very pleased with the fact it was able to use the ISS to make a couple of other contacts on ham radio. And that's my update video. Thanks for watching.